You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! You're listening to the Free America Radio Network. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty or safety. Benjamin Franklin. From the Free America Radio Network, from behind enemy lines in FEMA Region 9, this is The Views Expressed Live. Hey folks, how you doing? This is The Views Express Live, right here for the 7th of April, 2014. And I gotta tell you, I got to tell you, so many things are happening. So many things are happening that um, you can just read them in the paper in Clark County. In southern Nevada, a farmer, a cattle rancher, actually, yes, there are still cattle ranchers uh, around Nevada, allows his cattle to go everywhere to eat. Okay? Now, they need to eat, too, you know. But no, the environmentalist Nazis that are more worried about a freaking desert tortoise than the uh, health and welfare and the well-being of those cows for the livelihood of that cattle rancher is more important. Go listen to the Wayne S. Pierce show from earlier today at the Wayne S. Pierce show dot Weebly dot com site. And I got to tell you, you'll hear how pissed off I truly am about the government's force. The government is forcing Forcing their will upon this cattle rancher. And, oh, if that's not enough, there's a little tiny area for free speech. And there's another area for the media. The government has set those areas aside for just that. Well enough. Washington, D.C. has become irrelevant the policies and procedures and laws that come out, the unconstitutional laws that come out of Washington, D.C., are irrelevant. I will not comply. And people in southern Nevada and in Clark County better get down there in hundreds, if not tens of thousands of people, better surround that cattle rancher's home to protect his family. Or you don't have the balls to be an American. You know, I support people like Brian Lang over at Live Truth Radio. And his efforts to get the word out as well on the overpasses elsewhere. So a few people out there in southern Nevada want to get out in the streets. Or better yet pack it up and go to this farmer's house and protect him and his family against the tyrannical government using uh, ATF, using, uh, uh, you know, the militarized law enforcement against this free citizen of the United States of America. If you guys don't do that, you got some explaining to do. Either that You can pack your crap and go to Russia. Because I guarantee you, if you don't stand up for what the United States is and what your grandfathers and grandmothers and uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters have fought for, I'm pretty sure Russia and China would love your citizenship. Photography is an art form, and Adventures in Photography shows you all of the forms of art there is in our world. Spencer Hughes captures the colors and works of natural art in his book, Adventures in Photography. For more information, 
go to spencerhughesphotography.com. What is reality? The foundation of reality is based on many concepts. Each person perceives reality differently. In the book, The Grid, by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman, they explore the hidden infrastructure of reality. Get your copy today at Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com. The Grid, by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman. Did you know that the first Matrix was designed to be a perfect human world where none suffered, where everyone would be happy. And it was a disaster. No one would accept the program. Entire crops were lost. Some believed that we lacked the programming language to describe your perfect world, but I believe that as a species, human beings define their reality through misery and suffering. So the perfect world was a dream that your primitive cerebrum kept trying to wake up from. Which is why the Matrix was redesigned to this, the peak of your civilization. It's Spencer Hughes from The Spencer Hughes Show on Spreaker.com, and you're listening to The Views Express Live. Howdy, 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 folks. This is the Views Express Live right here on the 7th of April, 2014. (sighs) Yes, we have a lot in the news, and I may not take a whole lot of breaks today. Probably, I don't know, two or three, four more maybe. Because there's a lot. Go to Free America Radio on uh, Facebook and uh, check it out. Okay? Check out what's going on. Alright? Because, well, yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to need to see it. Go to Facebook. Look up Free America Radio. U.S. Senate votes to extend jobless benefits. Faces divided house. That's from Reuters.com. Bill Clinton, this is what Mr. Clinton says, an alien invasion, quote, you got that right, an alien invasion, quote, may be the only way to unite the world, unquote. Yeah, we'll get into that one. You just hold on to your thoughts there. Also from, oh, and that article was from politicalvelcraft.org politicalvelcraft.org from policestateusa.com New Jersey student put through five hours of psychiatric testing after twirling a pencil like a gun from minorityreportblog.com video shows Californians upset over lack of doctors under Obamacare could have told you that dumbasses from Cop Block on Facebook. There's a picture there, an exchange in West Memphis. From Ready Chimp, study all but two multiple public school, uh, blah, blah, blah. all but two multiple public shootings since 1950 took place where guns were banned. All but two multiple public shootings since 1950 took place where guns were banned. Also, from the Guerrilla Media Network, the Pete Santilli Show, episode 674, he talks to Barbara, a targeted individual. You might want to listen to that. Also, the newamerican.com UN quote unquote human rights report attacks U.S. gun rights and constitution. 
See what they're trying to do, folks. Also from 21st Century Wire, Patrick Hinnison over there, uh, there's an article from Gawker. Dot com says, quote, arrest climate change deniers, unquote, but where would we put them? From newsbusters.org, recently, Brandon Ike was uh, forced to leave, bullied, in fact, to leave the company he co-founded, Mozilla.org. Picture here says, Firefox CEO donates $10,000 to a traditional marriage cause in 2008. Media find out erupt in feeding frenzy, pressured to resign in 2014. Obama in 2008, quote unquote, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. I am not in favor of gay marriage. Media worships him and wins two elections. Okay, you get the point on that one? Also, police, uh, uh, this is from readychimp.com. Police state USSA, feds versus rancher face-off. That's what I talked about in southern Nevada and Clark County. Also from Fox News, why is New York City bullying Christians? <clears throat> also from Fox Radio, <clears throat> Is it time to allow more guns on military bases? I'd like to get your input on that, folks. Also, also from FreedomOutpost.com, California, Obama exchange now sending voter ballots pre-marked. Okay. <clears throat> also, from TheBlaze.com, quote-unquote, annoy a cop in New York State. That could soon earn you a four-year jail sentence. You understand where all this is going, folks? Do you absolutely understand where all this is going? Have you got a clue? Has, 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 it, even, has it even sunk into your cranium yet where all this is going? Has it? Have you put two and two together yet, folks? Have you put two and two together? I fail to recognize, not because I don't want to, but because it's just so confusing. I fail to recognize the United States of America anymore as it was supposed to be prior to 1871. Now, granted, granted, I wasn't <clears throat> alive prior to 1871, but... From the diaries and from the letters that I've seen and read in history and from what has come out uh, throughout my academic and self-education throughout the years, I can tell you that the United States of America is far from being united and far from being states that really care about the Constitution or the Bill of Rights because if they did, do you think they would have their own But that's for another discussion for another program. I believe that this president is nothing more than a dictator. And I think Brian Keller in his book, Dictator in Chief, had it right when he described to me what he wrote about. I believe that we can look out among the landscape and this geopolitical system around the world and put two and two together and realize the United States of America, as we know it, is slowly dying because we are the only ones who held out for peace, freedom, and security for its own people and its own country. And we are slowly falling apart. Now, others would probably say, well, that has to happen before we can rebuild it in the image of the people of who, you know, what we want in this country and who it is we want to lead this country. Well, when you look back in biblical stories and the biblical myth, uh, mythos, you will find that most people wanted a leader. They wanted somebody that they can tangibly look at, but also at the appropriate time use as a scapegoat 
for their lives. Mm -hmm. And in and of itself, having a leader is not bad. But as, as we go on through the challenges of life, why do we need a leader that will just not care about the people or about the rights that they, about the unalienable rights that they have? Then when you continue to look at biblical lore and, and the biblical uh, uh, mythos and you look at the prophecies set down by uh, prophets prior to Nostradamus or you look at Nostradamus or you look at modern day prophets like the sleeping prophet Edgar Cayce and you examine these things, there's only one thing that comes to mind, folks, at least in my mind. I can't speak for you. But in my mind, what comes to mind is people getting up and doing what they have to do to, pr to protect their families, their land, their countries, and doing what they have to do by any means necessary. But I've also seen what happens when people don't stand up. I've seen what happens when people don't take an active role in the support of freedom and liberty and security for their country. You wind up with countries like China and Russia and Iran, Turkey. But then again, when you look at history throughout the thousands and thousands upon thousands of years, you look at these different countries, you look at these different governments, it comes in cycles, but some countries don't ever get out of that cycle. Once you are pulled into a fascist dicta uh, dictatorship or, or some sort of uh, national, uh, uh, you know, what is that, Na uh, uh, national socialist ideal, it's very, very difficult for a very, very long time to get out of it, if you get out of it at all. And America has been, the United States has been one of the countries on the American continent that has been the example, the front runner, the established uh, founder of peace, freedom, and security in a country. Because frankly, folks, we don't take any crap from foreign enemies or domestic. And I'll tell you what. We ain't taking any more. So this non-citizen we have in the White House better get his ass out now. May 16th, American Spring coming up. If you're near or around, uh, if you're around or live near Washington, D.C., you better hit it up on May 16th. And I've told people, too, around the Reno area, I'm going to be downtown at the rink you know what I'm talking about if you live in the Reno area. And I'm not going to be difficult to miss either. You'll see me. Now. If there's anything in life, if there's anything in this country that really has... the foundation of liberty and freedom, it has been the hearts and spirits of the people. And this country, we see a hell of a lot of people giving up too quickly. Huh. Seems to me they don't have any balls. But I could be wrong in that. It's come to my attention that as I look through history and examine the steadily growing freedom in America, I found that at a certain part in the U.S. history that people just gave up. People didn't fight for it. People never fought for what they believed was right, such as the unconstitutional uh, thievery 
of taxes. Now, I know everybody's going to point to the 16th Amendment. Everybody's going to point to that 16th Amendment. Okay. Now, <clears throat> everybody wants to parrot the 16th Amendment. Okay. But let me explain something to you. Passed by Congress on July 2nd, 1909, and ratified, get this, February 3rd, 1913. The 16th Amendment established Congress's right to impose a federal income tax. 1913, President Woodrow Wilson signed this into law. Also, the Federal Reserve Act. I'll look that up here in a minute. Far-reaching in its uh, social as well as its economic impact, the income tax amendment became part of the Constitution by a curious series of events culminating in a bit of political maneuvering that went awry. This is from rdocuments.gov. Let me post that in the Free America Radio uh, Facebook page. Because you people need to know about this. You may or may not agree with the fact that we don't need income tax. Or you might just rally around the flagpole and say, we need to tax everybody at 50%. Who knows? Continuing, the financial requirements of the Civil War prompted the first American income tax in 1861. At first, Congress placed a flat 3% tax on all incomes over $800 and later modified this principle to include a graduated tax. Congress repealed the income tax in 1872, but the concept did not disappear. After the Civil War... The growing uh, industrial and financial markets of the eastern United States generally prospered. But the farmers of the south and the west suffered from low prices for their farm products while they were forced to pay high prices for manufactured goods. Throughout the 1860s, 1870s, and 1880s, farmers formed such political organizations as the Grange, the Greenback Party, the National Farmers Alliance, and Peoples, or the Populist Party. All of these groups advocated many reforms considered radical for the times, including a graduated income tax. In 1894, as part of the High Tariff Bill, Congress enacted a 2% tax on income over $4,000. The tax was almost immediately struck down by a 5-4 to four decision by the, uh, by the Supreme Court, even though the court had upheld the constitutionality of the Civil War tax as recently as 1881. Although farm organizations denounced the court's decision as a prime example of the alliance of government and business against the farmer, a general return of prosperity around the turn of the century softened the demand for the reform. Democratic Party platforms under the leadership of three-time presidential candidate William Jennings Bryan, however, consistently included an income tax plank. The progressive wing of the Republican Party also espoused the concept. See, folks, there is a progressive wing of the Republican Party as there is a progressive wing of the Democratic Party. They're all progressives. In 1909, the progressives in Congress again attached a provision for an income tax to the tariff bill. Conservatives, hoping to kill the idea for good, proposed a constitutional amendment enacting such a tax. They believed an amendment would never receive ratification by three-fourths of the state. Much to their surprise, the amendment was ratified by one state legislature 
uh, after another on February 25th, 1913, with the certification of Secretary of State Philander C. Knox on 16th Amendment, took, the 16th Amendment took effect. Yet... In 1913, due to generous exemptions and deductions, less than 1% of the population paid income taxes at the rate of only 1% of the net income. This document settled the constitutional question of how to tax income and by doing so affected dramatic changes in the American way of life. This information also was ex uh, excerpted from milestone documents in the National Archives, Washington, D.C., National Archives and Records Administration, 1995, pages 69 through 73. So is it unconstitutional to have an income tax? Not according to them and not according to President Woodrow Wilson. Do we want an income tax? No, we don't. But if we do, it better be a flat tax across the board of 10 to 15 percent, period. I don't care if you make a thousand dollars a month, which is well below the poverty level, or a thousand dollars an hour, it doesn't matter. 10 to 15% across the board. You number crunchers out there, please send me that information and tell me whether or not this is uh, tell me whether or not this is doable. Cuz I want to know. Okay? I believe it is. I believe if you make a billion dollars a year and you're taxed at 15% What's left over? Huh? You still got, you know, a lot of money. So who gives a crap? So anyway. <sighs> yes, heavy sigh. When I get back from the bottom of the hour break, I'm going to go to Reuters. Senate votes to extend jobless benefits faces divided house. You're going to see a lot of that. A lot of tongue wagging over this whole issue of extended unemployment benefits. The idea of even having, like other countries or some other countries do, they just pay people every month. Like, you know, myself, or anybody just here, you know, the government's just going to give you so much money a month, and, and you're going to live on it, and that's it. That idea has been floating around Congress. Hell, if that happened to me, I can start my business and, you know, go from there. But, you know, I think these jackasses in Washington know what the hell they're doing? Not in the least. None of them know what they're doing. None of them. Abolish the minimum wage, institute a fair market living wage per region, because some regions have a higher cost of living, some don't. Flat tax across the board of 15%. That's the highest. I don't think that would ever fly. Maybe 10% is easier to calculate. And get rid of the IRS and get rid of the Federal Reserve. And get rid of uh, federal taxes altogether. Apply a consumption tax. If you want to go that route. It's better just to have a flat tax. You'll have more money in the state's coffers and you go from there. And you work it out. Number crunchers. Hey, <clears throat> financial geniuses. Send me the information and tell me how wrong I am if I am. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. Go to freeamericaradio.us for more information about this show. I shall return right after this. 
Listen to Angel Clark Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Radio Freedom News Network. Radio Freedom. US. It's time to take our republic back, folks. Brian Bonner, the uncooperative radio show host, will tell you how. Join us for the ride of your life. Using humor and the facts, we'll expose the news that the lamestream media refuses to report. The Constitution is a solution, and we can prove it. Listen in and find out what it means to be an uncooperative citizen of these United States. You can find our show at uncooperativeradio.com, and we are rebroadcast on redstatetalkradio.com. What's on your mind? Chances are it's on their mind, too. Check out Diana and Wayne's Crab Bag Potpourri Talk Show, Friday evenings at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, only on Spreaker.com. For the best Southern, classic, and new rock, along with kicking country and R&B, check out Wildcat Radio for the Friday Night Party. The fun begins at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, with local, state, and national news from the Alabama News Network at the top and bottom of every hour. It's Wildcat Radio's Friday Night Party, a division of the Vulcan Internet Broadcast Company. No elitist dribble, no media spin. Logic over emotion, fact over fiction. The home of independent conservative thought. The conservative voice with your host, Jeff Wagner, only on the Conservative Radio Network. Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome back. This is the Views Express Live. I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Heavy, (laughs) heavy sigh. From Reuters.com, Senate votes on extended jobless benefits faces divided house. This is posted today. Democratic-led U.S. Senate passed a bill on Monday to restore expired jobless benefits to 2.4 million Americans who had been out of work for at least six months. President Barack Obama quickly responded by urging the Republican-led House of Representatives to give the measure final approval so he can sign it into law. Quote, the Senate just took action on a bipartisan bill, unquote, to renew unemployment insurance uh, Obama said in a Twitter message, quote, it's up to the House to follow uh, suit, unquote. The bill passed 59 to 38, had long seemed uh, certain to die in the House amid stiff Republican opposition, but pressure has mounted on the House to help the unemployed this year, this election year. Yeah, pay him to vote. How's that? Shortly after the Senate vote, seven House Republicans wrote party uh, leadership asking that the House vote be held on the bill or on a similar measure. In addition to, <clears throat> in addition, the lead, or excuse me, the lead, the lead Republican sponsor of bipartisan Senate bill, Dean Heller of Nevada, said he wants to meet with the House Speaker John Boehner and find out, uh, find a way to move the effort forward. Boehner and other Republicans oppose the bill, saying it does not meet their demands that it include job creation provisions. Boehner also has also called the measure unworkable, citing concerns by state administrators. Instead of giving money to the unemployed, how about about creating something for them that helps them start their own businesses if they would like? But see, you know, they, they don't want that. It's too easy. It's too easy. Why would they want that? Why? Why would they want to give anybody any type of incentive to grow for themselves? To grow a business for themselves? To make for themselves something that they can be proud of? Why can't they give billions of dollars into entrepreneurial grants to help people start businesses instead of, instead of spending tens of billions of dollars in unemployment benefits for people just to sit on their ass. Huh? How come they can't do that? 
George Bush, uh, you know, signed $867 billion to bail out banks and car companies, or, you know, back then in 2008, 2009, you know, nine. Obama did the same thing as soon as he got into business or got into the office, right? So why are you going to spend that kind of money on bailing people out? Why not give me $100,000 so that I can start my own company and hire people locally? That's too easy, is it? Isn't it? Excuse me. My grammar sucks today. How about giving me $250,000 in a personal bailout to help me start my business, hire some people, and uh, get the economy growing in the Reno, Nevada area. Or wherever I decide, you know, my business should be. Why not? Hey, number crunchers, tell me why that won't happen. I spent too many of my years being on this planet having to deal with ignorant people. I'm a very well-educated individual. Mama didn't raise no fool. Daddy taught me how to take care of myself. And I guarantee you that I know what I'm doing when I say you can bail each individual out or allow these unemployed to, if they wish, to develop their own companies and go from there. Doesn't the state or the feds know that these companies pay taxes at the end of the year? Every single, getting back to taxes, every single tax should be flat tax, no matter if you're, it's personal or business. If you go to work for a company and you're making, I'll just throw a number out here, $15 an hour, you're, you should not be uh, taxed, uh, whether it be your Social Security, whatever, that, that should go away too. It all should be one simple tax to cover both federal withholdings and they say it's not a tax it is a tax federal withholdings and your social security tax just put it all into one and just say screw it you don't get anything back at the end of the year and we're only going to take you know 10 percent, 15 percent of your check and that's just the way it is why not why wouldn't that work Go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, folks. Politicalvelcraft.org. Bill Clinton said, an alien invasion may be the only way to unite the world. But wait, it was the alien memo that ended Kennedy's life. There's a video there. Jimmy Kimmel. Number one, more comical diversion prepping of our psyche. No, uh, excuse me, that was a question, not a statement. More comical diversion prepping of our psyche. Comical diversion. See, my grammar sucks today, folks. Number two, making a mountain out of a molehill. Number three, only way to unite the world. Number four, just an innocent, innocent chit-chat. Let's take number four and have our own as innocent comical chit-chat. Would contact with a race of aliens be enough to fully unite humanity? Would it cause all of us to drop our bitter quarrels and come together as one? And that is apparently what former President Bill Clinton believes. On Jimmy Kimmel Live the other night, Clinton said that an alien invasion may be the only way to unite this increasingly divided world of ours. He also said, quote, if we were visited someday, I wouldn't be surprised, unquote. So does he know something that the rest of us don't? Why is he sharing this now? In recent years, the general public has been primed for the possibility of contact with aliens. There have been an endless barrage of books, movies, television shows, and video games that portray human contact with extraterrestrials. It has gotten to the point where even some of the most hardcore skeptics in our society seem quite eager to embrace the possibility of extraterrestrial contact. 
Is this a good thing, or could the truth be that we are being set up for a great deception of historical proportions? Appearances by major political figures on late-night talk shows are usually highly scripted, so it seemed out of... It seemed odd that Jimmy Kimmel would ask Bill Clinton about UFOs. Is that something that Clinton actually wanted to talk about? When Kimmel asked his question, Clinton seemed quite prepared with his answers. Among other things, he told Kimmel that, the, that quote, the differences among people of Earth would seem small, unquote, if we were to be suddenly confronted with contact by extraterrestrials. The former president said on Jimmy Kimmel Live Wednesday that an invasion by extraterrestrials might be the best way to unite the frac fractious countries of our war-racked planet. Quote, it may be the only way to unite this increasingly divided world of ours. Think about all the differences among people on Earth would seem small if we feel threatened by a space invader. That's the whole theory of Independence Day, unquote, he said, referring to the 1996 sci-fi disaster flick. Quote, everybody gets together and makes nice, unquote. Didn't President Reagan say something like that similar at the UN? Hmm. Continuing, this is absolutely stunning. Back in 1987, well, here it is. President Ray, uh, Ronald Reagan made a similar statement. He told the United Nations General Assembly, quote, I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside of this world, unquote. At that time, a belief in, quote, unquote, aliens was usually ridiculed. Just think how much has happened since that time to help prepare humanity for alien contact. Yeah, didn't former President uh, Jimmy Carter say he saw a UFO? <clears throat> Not only have we been primed to think that it could happen someday, we have been primed to expect that it will happen someday. In fact, according to a survey conducted by National Geographic, 77% of all Americans already, quote, believe there are signs that aliens have visited Earth, unquote, but only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. That means that more Americans believe that UFOs have visited, uh, visited us than believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. At this point, even the most hardcore skeptics in our society seem absolutely primed for extraterrestrial uh, contact. Okay? In reality... Number one, polls, 2014. These are links, folks. You know, just go down the seven links right there of, of uh, those things in there in the article. Let me uh, continue on here. Just consider celebrity atheist Neil deGrasse Tyson, the host of the new Fox series Cosmos, a space-time odyssey. He appears very open of the possibility that aliens have visited us or may visit us in the future. In fact, he has joked, about, uh, he has joked that aliens may be avoiding open contact with us because they can't detect any sign of intelligence on this planet. There's a video there if you want to hear him say that. Hear him say, I, uh, he's, he says here, quote, I wonder if, in fact, we have been observed by aliens and upon close examination of human conduct and human behavior, they have concluded that there is no sign of intelligent life on Earth, unquote. And celebrity atheist Richard Dawkins seems very open to the possibility that life on Earth may have been uh, intelligently designed by aliens. Just check out this video, and there's one there in the article. U.S. Jesuit uh, Guy uh, Consalmagno, Mago, I don't know, on the Vatican Observatory said asking such questions as, would aliens have souls, that's in quotes, or, quote, does the salvation of Christ apply to them, unquote, helps one, quote, appreciate what it means for us to have a soul, unquote, and helps one better, quote, recognize that the salvation of Christ, mean, what the salvation of Christ means to us, unquote. That's from the Catholic News. St. <clears throat> Augustine, to what extent is the theory of evolution applied to man that God should have made us of natural, evolutionary, original causes in the production of man's body is per se not improbable and was 
propounded by St. Augustine. See St. Augustine of Hippo, St. Uh, under V. Augustinianism in history. Yeah, <clears throat> say that word. We must distinguish one between the theory of evolution as a scientific hypothesis and as a philosophical speculation. Number two, between the theory of evolution as based on theistic principles and as based on a materialistic and atheistic foundation. Number three, between the theory of evolution and Darwinism. Number four, between the theory of evolution as applied to the vegetable and animal kingdoms and as applied to man. That's from the New Advent. St. Augustine said, and I quote, I would not believe in the Gospels were it not for the authority of the Catholic Church, unquote. Uh, St. Augustine said, against the, uh, against the letter of Manny called, quote unquote, the foundation, uh, five, <coughs> colon six, excuse me. <clears throat> Continuing. Alternative, the Vatican also appears to be extremely interested in the search of extraterrestrial life. Vatican astronomers speak excitedly about the possibility of contact with, quote, brother extraterrestrials, unquote, in one non-Catholic uh, position, pandering to the tabloids, has even suggested, mocked, that aliens could be, quote, the saviors of the humankind, unquote. It seems like almost everyone is looking up uh, at the stars, hoping to contact with a hoping for contact with other life forms. <clears throat> to insist there must be intelligent life elsewhere in the universe is to overstate the case. It's also theologically irrelevant because the central tenets of Christianity remain intact with or without little green men. That's from Catholic. <clears throat> Continuing, and with each passing day, even more UFO videos and alien videos are posted on YouTube. Certainly, many of them are fakes, but it is true for. Uh, but is that true for all of them? It has gotten to the point where there are millions upon millions of people out there that claim that they have had either personally seen a UFO or have had contact with an alien being. With each passing decade, this type of activity seems to become even more frequent. So what is this all leading up to? All over the world, our technology is capturing images of these UFOs and aliens. And the following is one video from a Mississippi, from Mississippi. <coughs> yeah. And uh, this was just put up recently. So, I mean, you know, like as of the last couple of days and, and the last week, possibly. So you might want to check out that video. It's only one minute, 55 seconds long. It's on YouTube, UFOs descend on deer in Mississippi woods. Continuing, most people out there seem to have the hope that when we do make contact with aliens that they will come in peace. And there are many, including Bill Clinton, that seem to believe that contact with extraterrestrial life will finally be the moment that unites the entire world. Kennedy murdered. Yes, folks, murdered. Kennedy murdered. Read how the facts were spun on JFK's murder to the public in the Rothschild City of London at 8.21 a.m. on 19th of April, 2011. So according to the article above, it was a secret memo about aliens. Oh, yes, memo gets JFK murdered, and we're supposed to believe Bill Clinton got to live contrary to and in spite of reviewing memos of Area 51 and memos on UFO aliens. So... <clears throat> So UFO memos bring out Lee Harvey Oswald? Is the UK Mail Online challenging the Warren Commission? <clears throat> the Rothschilds aliens, aerial um, hallucinogenics, Operation Blue Beam. But there are others that have studied these things intensely for many years that are deeply, deeply concerned about the agenda of these quote-unquote aliens. For instance, Temple University professor Dr. David Jacobs has been studying the alien abduction phenomenon for more than 30 years and has developed, quote, a tremendous sense of concern about the future, unquote, based on what he has discovered. As he says, quote, but I must say that now that I've learned as much as I have learned and I think I've learned an awful lot, I'm very, very unsettled and upset by what I see. I don't like what I see. I wish I didn't see this. I wish I hadn't uncovered this. I despair, I, I, I despair of it. 
It's thrown me into a tremendous sense of concern about the future and unease. I just don't like it very much. I wish I, <clears throat> I wish I did. I don't want to be this way. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I could not have ever imagined that I would come to this position. What I am seeing now, what I have found with this phenomenon, I could never have imagined." Unquote. Do not be men or women of sadness. A Christian can never be sad, never give way to discouragement, is one little blurb there. <clears throat> but this um, is an interesting piece. Uh, quote, Ours is not a joy, not a joy that comes from having many possessions, but from having encountered a person, Jesus. From knowing that with him we are never alone, even at difficult moments, even when our lives journey when our life's journey comes up against problems and obstacles that seem insurmountable, he said. Okay. The Catholic News Agency says, quote, Peace in the whole world, still divided by greed, looking for easy gain, wounded by the selfishness which threatens human life and the family, selfishness that continues in human trafficking, and most intensive form, the most intensive form of slavery in this 21st century. Human trafficking is the most extensive form of slavery in the 21st century. Peace to the whole world, torn apart by violence linked to drug trafficking and by this, by the uh, inquisitous uh, exploitation of natural resources. Peace to this our earth. Made the risen Jesus bring uh, comfort to the victims of natural disasters and make us responsible guardians of creation. Dear brothers and sisters, to all of you who are listening to me from Rome and from all over the world, I address the invitation of the Psalms. This is what Pope Francis was saying. And any quotes from Psalms 117 uh, 1 and 2. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. So what do you think? Do you believe that we will make contact with extraterrestrial life someday? If we do, will that be a good? Will that be good or bad? Michael Snyder wrote that. Uh, Truth wins. There's a picture of uh, the Pope. Vatican versus the Illuminati. Uh, Pope John Paul II told scientists, uh, quote, truth does not contradict truth, unquote, meaning scientific truths will never contradict religious truths. And there's a bunch of links there for, uh, for you as well. <clears throat> so all of that from Bill Clinton saying that uh, we'll be more united if there was an alien invasion. Really? Really? I'd have not heard, it may have happened, but I have not been privy to the information, that most of the presidents wanted to see what was in Area 51. And the first one that did and said he would was President Jimmy Carter. They uh, managed to, uh, his handlers of that time, managed to uh, dissuade him from going to Area 51. And he even claimed he saw a UFO. Now, let me <clears throat> go here, folks, uh, until the top of the hour. <clears throat> For anyone to believe that we're the only ones in this part of the universe is very arrogant, very conceited, and honestly, very ignorant of the possibilities of what could or could not be out there. <clears throat> now, just because I haven't seen these uh, humanoidal or maybe even gray aliens, I, I doesn't say that they don't exist. But let me put it to you this way. If, in fact, let me throw this out at you for you to ponder. If, in fact, we do encounter alien life from another planet, they land here, they look at us going, oh my God, did we screw up. Does that tell the Christian community 
that things are done for their community. No. I was talking to a, uh, years ago now, it was back uh, <clears throat> in 98, 99. I was talking to a friend of mine who, you know, is a, a devout Christian. But he even understands that, hey, you know, it could be possible that we're not the only ones in this universe. And I asked him a very simple question. Does that take away from the from the motivating factor of a person to seek Jesus for salvation? And would an alien understand who Jesus was? My friend looked at me and just smiled and said, Jesus is for everybody. And I took that to mean, well, hey, if there was an alien out there, they would identify a loving, kind, you know, God, uh, Jesus, as they would in their own way. They would interpret it their own way, much as, much as we have on this planet. As you know, we have a plethora of religions with the main theme of a higher power guiding us. So I don't think that's outside the realm of possibility there if, in fact, an alien does encounter the Word of God. But then again, on the other hand, you've got the skeptics that say we are the only ones here in the... I shouldn't say skeptics. That's involving a whole bunch of other people. We do have people who say we are the only ones in this part of the galaxy and we're the only humans to ever exist in the universe. Okay, these people are either completely stupid or have no idea what is beyond the possibilities of this limited existence. Okay. And as we look at all of what's going on around us. Imagine this, folks. We're a tiny little speck. Little tiny speck. In the whole vastness of this galaxy, including the vastness of where this galaxy is in comparison to the universe. So do our problems geopolitically, academically, spiritually uh, matter to us individually? Yes, they do. But in the scope of the whole universe and the galaxy that we live in, it don't matter much, folks. Seriously. Your priorities are a little twisted if you think that it's more important to... Uh, or. It is, I should say, it is important to live and survive and try to get along with man upon this rock we call Earth, but in the scope of everything else, we're destroying ourselves in every which way possible, by any means necessary, because that person over there across the street wants things done his way, that woman down on the corner wants things done her way, and the person in the White House wants things done their way. Talk about your selfish ambitions and selfish priorities. Holy crap. And in comparison to the galaxy and the universe, that's just completely stupid. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Look at where you are, folks. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. I've had people tell me this. For you know, they they felt lost for years. They didn't know where to go. I would talk to them, and my other friends would talk to them and stuff. And they would look at me and just say, "One day I woke up and realized I know who I am." And I said, "Well, what happened after that?" And they said, "You've inspired me to grow as an individual." And I went, "Really? I did." Well. <laughs> Then they'd confess and say it was a, a combination of a lot of things. But once they realized who they were in the scope of this whole massive, you know, humanity thing, you know, that's going on here, they realized who they were. <clears throat> and they realized what they needed to do. And they did it. It was that simple. There was no complicated verse or a change of this or whatever. No, it's just you woke up, you realized who you were, and you moved out from that. 
point. Yeah, just went from there. FreeAmericaRadio.us is the website. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com is the email. I shall return right after this. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and fact that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal, the government lies and the government ties, and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions of times more. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about late night in the Midlands.com. Become a member and be informed. Get your morning started with the morning brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to Radio Rock the Blitz. Blogspot.com. Free Talk Live. You give someone an ounce of liberty and they'll go around abusing it and harming everyone else with it. If we legalize guns... People will um, be shooting people everywhere. Right. If you legalize prostitution, people will be having sex on the street corners. <laughs> if you legalize drugs, we'll have heroin vending machines in the streets. We've heard it all on Free Talk Live. <laughs> they take it to the most absurd, illogical extremes. And you're absolutely right, Alexander. It's okay for them to have freedom. Yeah, you can give them a gun. They won't go around shooting people. But watch out with their neighbor because you give them a gun, they'll go around in a rampage around right. the city killing everyone. Oh, oh, but yes, they can be trusted, and apparently the government can be trusted, too, because magically, oh, yeah. magically, we only elect the best of the best, the cream of the crop. The bureaucrats that are administering <laughs> these programs are the upper echelon of society, the most trustworthy individuals. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when I squint, I swear I can see a halo above their heads. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Are you tired of the mainstream media, the media that is so biased you wouldn't even let your dog listen to it? Well, there's an answer. Angel Clark. On Radio Freedom. Just listen to her fans. One hell of a writer. I've read a considerable amount of her articles and quite impressive. Until Angel, my life was void of meaning. I want to thank you for saving my goldfish from drowning. I love Angel Clark's honesty and her down-to-earth concern about the people. She is very dedicated. Angel, we need you. Angel's a sexy woman. I think she's going to go places, but I don't know why. Ladies and gentlemen, she does a good job. If it wasn't for Angel, you saved his life, and I will be indebted to you forever. Sussex, angel.com. <laughs> be a part of Angel's Army. Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. on RadioFreedom.us. Free Talk Live. Do you guys have a zombie plan? I'm, I'm just wondering what this country is going to do if we had some sort of apocalypse like that. Like a what zombie attack. Do? People coming yeah, out like of the ground, like in Thriller, or, like in, uh, no, in Michael Jackson's like 28 Thriller. years later, like a virus or something. Oh, okay. I mean, people don't come back to life. Well, no, there are different kinds of zombies out there. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, but, well, let me go through the, the the types of zombies. I mean, you've got the ones that can crawl out of the ground, right? And then she was talking about like an infection kind of zombie, mm-hmm. like a la Resident Evil, for instance. So, ideally, if you're going to have to perish at the the hands of a zombie, which would be the preference? Would you prefer to have your brains eaten, or would you prefer to become one of them? I think I'd rather just die. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd, the last thing I'd want is, of course, the people you split up with. Then I'm talking my wife and my child. I'm coming back. I'm wanting to eat Laura's brains. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. 
Listen free anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is the Views Express live right here for the 7th of April 2014. How y'all doing? FreeAmericaRadio.us is the website. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com is the email address. Welcome, welcome, one and all in the Chickamauga, Georgia area, listening to me on 1610 AM. And also on WakingUpTheMasses.com and on FreeAmericaRadio.us. Welcome, one and all. If you want to chat with me, please do. I would love to hear from you. Go to the Spreaker side of things and chat with me. If you go to freeamericaradio.us and you go to the the uh, little player there that says live, click on the um, or click on the play button. Thank you. If it's not on yet, and uh, then go to the little bubble. There's a little bubble there, or something click on that that should be the chat room so jump in there and say hi (laughs) seriously because i want to know who's listening to me (laughs) i really do (laughs) go to free america radio on facebook if you were uh here in the first hour thank you appreciate that you heard me talk a lot uh about uh A lot of stuff, including Bill Clinton's assertion that if we had an alien invasion, that may unite the world, you know. Um, Let me, you know, and you heard my take on that as well. Let me uh, say, beginning this segment, there are things that we just don't know. And it's okay not to know them Or it's okay to admit you don't know. It's fine. It's okay. Not a big deal. Do we know that there's alien life out there in the galaxy that we live in or in the universe that our galaxy is in? Honestly, there's so much evidence to prove that there is that I don't know how I don't know how people can ignore it. But then again, We have a lot of high technology around the world on this planet. So what makes you think that those things are from intelligent life out in the universe? It's just something to ponder. Something to ponder. (sighs) Want to go here? Go to MinorityReportBlog.com. You can click on the link on Free America Radio on Facebook. And <clears throat> minority minority report that I, if I can speak minority report blog dot com. There's a video there you might want to check out. Californians upset over lack of doctors under Obamacare. <clears throat> California is a model of many liberal progressive policies, and by all accounts, the testing of Obamacare, a.k.a. the quote-unquote Affordable Care Act, is already showing evidence of complete failure. If you thought there was a shortage of doctors before, just wait until full implementation of Obamacare comes. By the way, this article was written and posted today, the 7th of April, 2014. From the Washington Free Beacon, Californians are expressing their dissatisfaction with California's health uh, insurance exchange, Covered California. Covered California Executive Director Peter Lee testified before a congressional committee about the successes of uh, Covered California. Quote, it takes, in our mind, three things for an exchange to work. It takes having affordable health plans, delivering quality care, It takes effective marketing outreach, and it takes effective enrollment, unquote, Lee said. 
click here uh, to read more at freebeacon.com. There's another video there as well. Uh, <clears throat> California sucks. You understand me? They're gone. They're like New York State. They are now a police. They are now a police state. They are. They are just totally uh, under the guidance of the uh, New World Order. Uh, we had 50 states, now we have 48. <clears throat> That's my opinion. If you go to Free America Radio on uh, Facebook and you scroll on down, you will see New Jersey student put uh, through five hours of psychiatric testing after twirling pencil like a gun. Posted today, Vernon, New Jersey, a seventh grader who quote, quote unquote twirled a pencil in the manner that someone thought resembled a gun was removed from math class and made to perform hours of psychiatric evaluation. According to News 12, in New Jersey, Ethan Chaplin apparently shared math class with a bully. The two had an ongoing dispute when the bully witnessed Ethan Chaplin twisting a pen cap over his pencil and yelled, he's making gun motion, send him to juvie, unquote. The mention of the word gun was evidently enough for a red flag to launch an investigation on Ethan. He was put through five hours of psychiatric testing where his mental state was evaluated to determine if he was a threat to other students. He was also suspended from school. While his son's evaluation came up quote-unquote clean, Michael Chapman is quote-unquote absolutely livid. So would I. The father tried to discuss the incident with the school. He was dodged by administrators. That changed when he went to the media. He wrote, quote, Within 15 minutes of a camera crew showing up at the BOE building, the administration, the administrators who, quote, were in meetings all day, unquote, and did not have time to see me, unquote, suddenly found their calendars clear and reached out to resolve the issue. Funny how that works, unquote. The absurdity of, quote, unquote, zero tolerance policies knows no bounds, and the reactions generated by these compulsory government institutions is enough to cause an aversion to guns, discussing them or exercising the right to own and carry them. But that may be the underlying point all along. We have seen overzealous punishment of children for similar things. Two seven-year-old kids in Virginia were suspended for pointing pencils at each other. Josh Welch, eight, was suspended when he bit a pastry into the shape resembling a gun. A girl was called a murderer and threatened to be arrested when a teacher saw her tear a piece of paper resembling a gun. A three-year-old deaf boy was told that the hand symbol for his name violates his school weapons policy and must be banned. There are many more examples and there are surely more yet to come. By the way, none of those things I just mentioned would ever, 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 ever harm anyone. Period. <clears throat> There's a video there if you want to see it. Okay, I'm going to say this. There is a dramatic... I use that in terms of overreaction. There is a dramatic... There is a dramatic fashion by which these administrators of these governmental indoctrination institutes want you to be scared, to be afraid. Oh my God, look, somebody, somebody bit a pastry into the shape of a gun. Oh my God, let's go, you, you, let's go search her mind for some semblance of what she may do if she might hurt someone. Oh, look, two boys, they're pointing their pencils at one another in the shape of guns. Oh, they must have a mental issue. I don't know, folks. 
the UN, the United Nations, is concerned for the U.S. because of its constitution and its, and its mindset for weapons. The United States government. That would be you and I, folks. So anytime you hear me say United States government, that would be you and I, we the people. Whenever the United States government does something that is outside the realm of the cookie-cutter uh, fascist dictatorship that we currently, that, that is currently Im implemented from Washington, D.C., someone gets upset, gets offended, gets pissed off, and says, we can't have that. Uh, excuse me? What part of peace, freedom, and liberty Peace, freedom, liberty, and security for this country do people not understand? What part of the First Amendment do these teachers and these administrators in these governmental indoctr indoctrination institutes do not under? What, what part do they not understand? I'm going to say this once and for all. Oh, that's a bad way of saying it. I'm going to say this once, and you better listen to me. I have a First Amendment right to say what I want, when I want, how I want. I have a First Amendment right, uh, not given to me by the government, but given to me by God and protected by the document we call the Bill of Rights, to express myself in whatever way I see fit, to worship how I want, and to create a press and print what I want. If you're offended by that, get the hell out of my country. If you're offended by my speech, or let me put it this way, if you're offended by anyone's free speech, you got a serious problem. Now, other people would look at me and go, well, well, don't you think that people who oppose you have freedom of speech too? Yes, and I will defend them if someone says that they don't. But when that speech inhibits the pursuit of life, liberty, and, and the pursuit of happiness, when it inhibits our progress for bigger and better things in our lives individually, if someone else gets so offended that they want to stop me from creating a better world for myself, and have a job for myself, or create something for myself, then they are the ones with the mental problem. Not me. If I get people criticizing me for something they don't understand, which they don't have a right to do in the first place, all I ask them to do is take a look at me and ask me questions. I'm more than happy to tell you anything you need to know. But if you're going to get offended by that, well, I don't have to ask you anything. I just know just by looking at you, I can tell that you're really anybody that does that to me. I can see this massive derriere standing in front of me. You know what I'm saying. We're in America. Anybody that opposes anybody else has the same freedoms as somebody who says whatever they want. And I oppose you in that. I disagree with all of that. I've had every single thing said to me in that fashion over the years that I've been on this planet and alive. And you know what? Again, you oppose me. You have the freedom to do so, and I will stand next to you and defend your freedom to have that oppositional or to have that op opposing view. If anyone says that you can't have it, I will defend your right to freedom of speech. But when your freedom of speech begins to cross the line and you begin to bully me to try to, quote unquote, straighten me out or try to get me to quote-unquote, get with the program. Oh, that's when I come unglued. Figuratively speaking, mind you.
So when our federal government, when the members in the criminal organization we call Congress tend to ignore the people, they are condoning the criminal activity coming out of the White House, period. And when the White House says that I don't have freedom of speech, and when a justice in the Supreme Court, Justice Sotomayor, says that we don't have free speech, that we don't have constitutional rights, that they're all privileges, that is the first person I want off of my Supreme Court. When I say my Supreme Court, the United States citizens of <clears throat> the citizens of the United States who allowed those people to be there are their boss as we are the bosses of anybody in Congress, including the president and vice president of the United States of America. But see, things had changed. The Act of, uh, the Act of 1871 changed all that. Because we're no longer the United States of, I mean, uh, United States for uh, the, blah, blah, blah. we are no longer the United States of America. We are the United States of America Incorporated. In 1871, it changed all of that because we, it went from being the Constitution for the United States of America to the Constitution of the United States of America, just changing those words around and implementing certain things in Congress and passing certain laws behind closed doors has created the United States of America Incorporated as a business, not as free land. Oh, speaking of free land, public land, hear what's going on down in Clark County in Southern Nevada? Really? I think it's time we take out the trash. What do you think, people? What do you think? Hey, Mr. Brian Sandoval, the, gover the governor of Nevada. What are you doing? Are you allowing an American citizen whose family has been here for years to be harassed by the militarized law enforcement? And why the hell do you have a portion of land where free speech can only be where the protesters can come and write their away from all of what is happening at the ranch of Clive and Bundy? By the way, Mr. Governor Brian Sandoval, you better read that Constitution and that Bill of Rights. Because that First Amendment doesn't say you only have freedom of speech in this certain area. No, 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 no. No, no. Shame on you, Mr. Governor. That clause means we have freedom of speech in all 50 states on every square mile of this continent. Now, whether you like it or not, that is what you swore to protect and defend. And if you can't do that, Mr. Brian Sandoval, I suggest you not run in the midterm elections. Or 2016. Because you're going to have, you're going to, you're not going to like the outcome. Because you're going to get voted out of office, and somebody hopefully is going to be put in there, not by, well, let me just say this. I know how the elections work. I know how the process for elections work. You were selected, Mr. Brian Sandoval. That's all there was to it. You weren't voted in by the people. Crunch the numbers. Connect the dots. Follow the money. I have, and guess what? cha-ching somebody bought your position and it wasn't the contributors of your campaign oh i know a lot more than what i'm letting on i know a lot more than what i'm telling you 
And you know what? If I were to tell you the things that I actually know and what goes on in the state of Nevada and possibly in other states as well, it would not only send shivers up your spine, you would be wondering why the hell we've allowed all of this to happen to the great nation of the United States of America. It's just, makes you wonder, folks, doesn't it? If they're going to cover up Benghazi, things like that, if they're going to cover up all of these situations, if they're going to create false flag events to get us into war in other countries, because as you know, General Smedley Butler said war is a racket, if, you, it, 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 if we have allowed all these cover-ups and false flags to take place, what do you think they're not going to tell us that we have to find out? Okay, And those folks in Las Vegas, Nevada, and Clark County, or down there in Clark County, I should say, should go to Clive and Bundy's ranch. And you see that little area that they say, uh, you know, it says free speed zone? How about going over there, tearing down the sign, tearing down the barriers, and just going all over the place? They can't arrest all of you at one time, can they? How about doing that? I challenge everybody right now within the sound of my voice in Southern Nevada or pass this podcast on to someone down there. Go around his ranch if it doesn't come to an end anytime soon. Go down there with hundreds of people and surround his ranch. Tear up that free speech zone. Tear up all of it and just say, no, we have free speech. We're going to protest your tyrannical implementation and your takeover of this man's ranch and livelihood. We protest it. I, if, I'm eight hours away. If I had uh, the time and the effort, or not the effort, if I had the time and the vehicle to go down there tonight, I would. And I'd be there standing right next to him saying, I'm here to defend your rights. But I don't, and that's why I call on you. Governor Brian Sandoval, you got some nerve not to stand up for one of your citizens in your state. Do you have the balls, Mr. Sandoval? I'm only 35 minutes away from the state capitol. Don't make me come down there. I won't do anything harmful against you, but you ain't been talked to. Yo, let me let me let me just put it this way: your grandma probably talked to you, you know, like this. But you don't want the citizens of Nevada to look at you and talk to you like this, Governor. You better do something now. You better tell that ATF, and you better tell all those militarized law enforcement to back off. Because if you don't, your reputation is on the line. And so is the reputation of the lieutenant governor and of the attorney general. Now, do I know the whole story? It was on I-Team. George Knapp. There you go. I, don't, I know enough from what was reported, and I can tell you this much. He has the unalienable right to be a conscientious objector and not pay what he has to, what he doesn't want to pay for because it's going to be to his own demise? No. He doesn't have to comply with a rule of law that is going to put him in the grave. Period. And if he's seen lawyers, and if he's talked to people, and if he's done all that, then there's only one step and one step only. And that is, he becomes a sovereign citizen, and you have no say in what he does. I call upon the governor of Nevada, Brian Sandoval, and the lieutenant governor, and the state attorney general, to call off those militarized law enforcement to get away from his house now. If not, you're going to have hell to pay from the voting public come election time. And I suggest you seriously take me up on that suggestion. 
your boss, Harry Reid, he's out as well. Take it up with the ballot. My voice is loud and my pen is strong. When I get to the voting booth, that's where I make my decision. You got to do what you got to do, folks. And if you don't stand up for your rights now, you're going to lose each and every single one of them. And what are you going to do after that? Huh? What are you going to do after that? That's something to think about. Something to really think about. Put the pressure on the media. Put the pressure on the militarized law enforcement. Call up call up everybody that you can think of in the state house and start telling them, you better back off. and You better back off now. I'll be back right after this. With her unique, fast-paced, witty sarcasm, Angel Clark brings you the news of the day with a creative twist. Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern on RadioFreedom.us. You can also listen to her live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Lock it on to the best station on the net. The Free America Radio Network. Are you a filmmaker and want to make your epic feature film with no money, some money, and or all the money in the world? Listen to Christopher J. Taylor as he discusses everything you need to know about filmmaking and more on Film 101 on HTLA973.com. Hey folks, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. If you caught me in the last segment, thank you, appreciate it. I want to clarify one very important thing. We the people have the power. I'm not calling for any rebellion, I'm not calling for anything that is physical, or confrontational with any law enforcement. But your word is your word. Civil disobedience and peaceful protesting work, especially when you call the media from all over the place to descend upon a very trying experience for a cattle rancher. Some of the updates say that his son was arrested or detained detained as it were fed start rounding up of Bundy's cattle in northeastern Clark County reviewjournal.com mentions that the feds are going to round up this man's cattle and sell them off because why this man is a conscientious objector and that's what i call it you don't want to you don't want to pay into a system that's going to cause that's going to overregulate you into bankruptcy to me that's 
to apply the conscientious objector to that is perfect. Hundreds of federal officers, cowboys, and helicopters disp uh, dis descend on Clive and Bundy's backyard Saturday, launching a roundup targeting at 500 head of cattle that are grazing on government land. Really? I thought it was public land. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's go over here, folks. Let's go over here. Oh, yeah, here it is. From M mvprogress.com. One of Bundy's sons arrested in Roundup incident. A man was arrested on Sunday afternoon in connection with the cattle Roundup currently ongoing by the Bureau of Land Management on nearly 600,000 acres of public land in northeastern Clark County. When this other article just mentioned it's on government land. Do you see... Let me go here, folks. <clears throat> Here's something else. <laughs> From the newamerican.com. Posted today, written by Alex Newman. Thank you, Alex, at the newamerican.com. UN, quote unquote, human rights report attacks U.S. gun rights and constitution. The United Nations pseudo-human rights bureaucracy released another report attacking American self-defense rights, quote, stand your ground, unquote, statutes passed at the state level, and the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment protection of the people's God-given right to keep and bear arms without government infringement. Agreeing with the Obama administration and the most extreme anti-Second Amendment members of Congress, see, they only target those who are against the Second Amendment in Congress, not everybody. So a small percentage of people in Congress. Continuing, the UN Human Rights Committee <clears throat> excuse me, also claimed that the U.S. government needed to expand the unconstitutional background check regime to include even private firearms sale. Again, this was posted today, the 7th of April, 2014. Continuing, in a section of the report entitled Gun Violence, the UN quote-unquote experts virtually all of whom came from governments that do not recognize the fundamental human right to possess weapons or of self-defense, claim to be, quote-unquote, concerned about multiple issues surrounding U.S. gun laws, despite, quote, measures taken to reduce gun violence, unquote, in advance of the U.N. document claims, quote, the committee remains concerned about the continuing high numbers of gun-related deaths and injuries and the disparate <clears throat> disparate impact of gun violence on minorities, women, and children, unquote. It was not immediately clear where the outfit obtained its data. By the way, that is all psychological operations, folks. Let me read that again and just keep your mind open and listen to the words. It's all wordplay. It's all trying to get you into that wedge against... <clears throat> against weapon holders okay let me read that again and in advance of the UN document claims quote the committee remains concerned about the continuing high numbers of gun related deaths and injuries and a disparate impact of gun violence on minorities women and children unquote by the way, high number? Continuing high numbers? No, the FBI's own records have shown <clears throat> uh, that numbers have, uh, of, of violent criminals or violent crime has gone down. Those have gone down. By the way, I point you to Chicago. They just said people can protect themselves. I point you to the new police chief in Detroit, Michigan. <clears throat> crime has gone down because people are now arming themselves against the criminals. So I don't want to hear this bull crap from the gun grabbers. You people are stupid. Do you understand me? Stupid. You don't like what I say? Don't listen to what I'm about to say. 
<clears throat> Continuing here, especially troubling to the U.N. bureaucrats was the alleged, quote, discriminatory effect of stand your ground laws, unquote, according to the report. While the U.N., quote unquote, experts praised the, quote unquote, investigation conducted by the federal, quote, Commission on Civil Rights, unquote, into the popular uh state protections of self-defense rights, the unelected international committee claimed to be, quote, concerned about the proliferation of such laws that are used to circumvent the limits of legitimate self-defense, sick, in violation of the state's party's uh, duty to protect life, unquote. It's not the... S <clears throat> the report marks at least the third time in recent months that the self-styled UN authorities have used discredited arguments to attack American protections for fundamental human rights. There you go. These people are the dumbest people on the face of the planet. It is not the state's duties to protect you. It's the citizen's to duty and, and responsibility to protect the state's. Period. Why do you think there is a militia that is there to help the, uh, and it's not the National Guard, the National Guard is totally separate from the state militia. Go look it up. The militia is there to back up the military for any invasion of any other state or foreign enemy into the United States. Period. End of sentence. I don't want to hear it anymore. You people are wrong. You gun-grabbing socialist Marxist pigs are wrong. I'm done with you pieces of crap. The UN is nothing but a global mafia that is trying to get your guns and to say, oh, let's all have a, a kumbaya moment and come together and, and be collective and work. No, 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 that's bull crap. That's bull crap. Continuing on with this article at the New American... UN Human Rights Report Attacks U.S. Gun Rights and Constitution, written by Alex Newman. Thank you, Alex. Continuing on, quote, The state party, the U.S. government, should take all necessary measures to abide by its obligation to effectively protect the right to life, unquote. Then ban abortion. <clears throat> the report continues, Despite the fact that studies show widespread gun ownership protects lives, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> That's what the thing said. The state party, the United States government, should take all necessary measures to abide by its obligation to effectively protect the right to life. The report continues, despite the fact that studies show widespread gun ownership protects lives. Quote, in particular, it should, A, continue its efforts to effectively curb gun violence, including through the continued pursuit of legislation requiring background checks for all private firearms transfer and transfers and B review stand your ground laws to remove far reaching immunity and ensure strict adherence to the principles of necessity and proportionality when using deadly force in self defense unquote <clears throat> Excuse me. Continuing, in other words, the UN is now brazenly and openly pushing for radical and unconstitutional changes to both U.S. and state law. In particular, the report is calling for a massive expansion of the background check regime, a plot that was so extreme it did not even make it through the Democratic-controlled U.S. Senate amid a full-blown assault on gun rights by the Obama administration. <clears throat> Pardon me while I take some water. <clears throat> there we go. Continuing, critics have attacked the controversial idea from all angles, but especially troublesome are the constitutional implica implications as well as well-founded suspicion that the Obama administration is unlawfully trying to use background checks to compile a national gun registry in defiance of federal law. Separately, the UN report called for the <clears throat> federal government to launch an attack on states' stand-your-ground laws, those laws adopted by about half of American states so far, 
protect the self-defense rights of all people in those jurisdictions, ensuring that they do not have to flee from potential murderous attackers. Despite UN demands, the federal government, of course, has no legitimate authority over state self-defense laws. Obviously, the UN has no power in that area either, although it is seeking it. The UN, for example, recently helped the murderous socialist regime of Venezuela disarm law-abiding citizens, sparking even more violence and murder. Sparking even more violence and murder while pushing global gun control via the UN Arms Trade Treaty, which Hillary Clinton went to Venezuela and then came back here and tried to <clears throat> go to Congress and talk about it and then went to the UN to try to get the UN to convince Congress to do it. Continuing, <clears throat> in September of last year, meanwhile, the dictator dominant. Uh, d a dictator-dominated UN came uh, uh, under massive criticism after further illustration its bizarre ignorance of and more likely hostility to the U.S. Constitution and state-level uh, protections of self-defense and other human rights. In a press release, multiple UN human rights bureaucrats even called on the Obama administration nulli uh, <coughs> nullify state laws that the globalist uh, outfit believes are discriminatory, taking a particular aim at stand your ground protections. Of course, neither the UN nor the US government has the power to nullify anything. Nullification is what the founding fathers promoted as a tool for the state governments to stop federal abuses and usurpation. Yes, you know what stand your ground means? You know, do you know why they want to get rid of the stand your ground laws in the states? So that we're not able to protect ourselves when the militarized law enforcement and the UN uh, forces, which means other countries coming to the US to, you know, battle us. They, they, <clears throat> I'm so pissed off, I can't even think straight. Basically, they want to take our guns away so we can't protect ourselves against their tyrannical army coming after us. Both on the United States and the UN portion of that. Why do you think they want to take our guns away so much? Because so we won't have a way to defend ourselves against their dumb asses. That's why. <clears throat> Continuing. To the UN, though, Americans' traditions and constitution appear to matter little, if at all, in the quest of what it calls global governance. One world order, folks, also known as global government. How about new world order? Just spell it out there, guy. <clears throat> Quote, states are required to take effective measures to review governmental, national, and local policies and to amend, rescind, or nullify any laws and regulations which have the effect of creating a, a, or perpetuating racial discrimination wherever it, it exists. Unquote, claimed Mutuma uh, Rutiri, the UN Special Report, uh, Reporter on Racism, I don't know what the hell that is, in a factually challenged screed about American protections for gun ownership and self-defense rights. Other self-styled UN quote-unquote experts made similar comments, earning prompt ridicule and criticism from across America. In its most recent report on alleged human rights violations in America, the international outfit also lashed out at the U.S. government for deporting illegal immigrants convicted of crimes. It slammed the purported lack of taxpayer-funded health care and welfare for illegal immigrants as well. Felons, meanwhile, must be allowed to vote despite state laws, the U.N. committee claimed. According to the radical U.N. quote-unquote experts, the U.S. government should also ignore the Constitution's limits on federal power to pass legislation banning corporal punishment for children, including spankings by parents in the home used as disciplinary tools. I got my ass whipped when I was a kid. Didn't bother me none. <clears throat> the latest anti-constitutional UN demands to curtail the constitutionally protected rights of Americans and enforce international mandates came in a recent released report produced by a self-styled group of 18 UN quote-unquote human rights experts, supposedly charged with monitoring obedience to a controversial international scheme on quote-unquote civil and political rights. The UN committee had both praise and condemnation for the Obama administration. In all, the global outcome outfit identified more than two dozen supposed U.S. quote-unquote human rights violations. Some 
Some of the purported violations do, in fact, represent legitimate instances of the Obama administration's increasingly anti-constitutional lawlessness and abuses. For example, the U.N. committee said U.S. government officials responsible for torture enforced disappearances, quote-unquote unlawful killings, and similar crimes ought to be prosecuted and punished. It also blasted the Obama administration's global mass murder spree using drones, as well as the spying perpetrated uh, by the National Security Agency. All of those U.S. crimes, of course, could be dealt with simply by enforcing U.S. Constitution as written. Among other supposed human rights violations, the UN Committee identified, quote, the overrepresentation of individuals belonging to racial and ethnic minorities in prisons and jails, unquote, state and local law enforcement activities such as excessive use of force, the death penalty, domestic violence, alleged criminalization of the homeless by state and local authorities, prison conditions, juvenile justice, and more. To comply with its recommendations, however, the U.S. government would have to go even further outside its constitutional boundaries and essentially take over state and local government. All of the very real problems identified by the U.N. committee, torture, impunity, murder by drone, unlawful spying, br brutal force, psychiatric treatment, mass incarceration, and more, would not even be an issue if authorities were following the U.S. Constitution and respecting the people's God-given rights. Many of the other alleged quote-unquote problems, though, arise from fundamental conflict in the understanding of human rights. In the American system, rights such as self-defense and gun ownership come from God and not and cannot be legitimately infringed upon by government which is instituted specifically to protect those rights. Under the UN's bizarre version of quote unquote human rights, however, rights are granted by governments and can be restricted or abolished at will and may in quote no case be exercised contrary to the purposes and principles of the United Nations, unquote, according to Article 29 of the UN Declaration of Human Rights. In other words, they are revocable government granted privileges instead of unalienable God given rights and protected by the U.S. Constitution. Obviously, the two views on human rights are incompatible with each other at a basic level. The fact that some of the world's most brutal communists and Islamists were put on the UN Human Rights Council last year exemplifies the conflict as well. Despite the UN's increasingly outrageous attacks on American freedoms, constitutional government uh, governance, values, self-government, uh, traditions, human rights, and more, the Obama administration said in its proposed 2015 budget that it wants to supersize U.S. funding for the international outfit and its oftentimes ruthless global military, which, are on, which is on American soil, by the way, folks. The pressure to have the U.S. government permanently withdraw from its so-called dictators club entirely, however, is growing fast, especially as the U.N. becomes increasingly brazen in its assault on American America. The UN wants the US government to impose its quote unquote recommendations and then submit quote unquote relevant information to the global outfit about its implementation of those demands within one year. A better plan would be obey the Constitution and get the United Nations out of uh, United States out of the UN and the UN out of the United States. HR 75, the American sovereignty rested uh, uh, re re the American Sovereignty Restoration Act, H.R. 75, introduced by represented, Representative Paul Braun, a Republican of Georgia, would do precisely that. H.R. 75. Go check that one out. Folks, I'm almost done. I didn't get to all of the... Uh, Articles I wanted to get to and comment on, but that's okay. Here's the bottom line. There's one organization in the United States of America that is pushing for unity. Pushing for the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But if you read that thing, you will see the contradictions between, or I should say, the contradictory nature of the Constitution of the United States of America and the Bill of Rights and the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. 
They oppose one another greatly, folks. Oh, let me just fill you in on this. I have read the UN Declar uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I have it on my computer. And guess what? You don't want it. Go to startpage.com or any search engine that you use. Punch in United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights PDF. Download it. Read it. Sounds really good. But remember, psychological operations and wordplay. Okay? I don't know what else to tell you, folks. I really, really don't. I really, really don't. I get to the point where I'm really, 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 really pissed off. And I just can't take it anymore. As you can tell on my The Wayne S. Pierce Show earlier that I have up, you might want to check that out at thewaynespierceshow.weebly.com or here on Spreaker.com. I'm pissed off. And I'm going to put the word out <clears throat> to Mr. Brian Lang from Live Truth Radio. <clears throat> Email me. I got a couple of questions to ask you. And if you're listening to me over on wakingupthemasses.com, please email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Anybody can. Ask me anything. I, <laughs> you got a question, I got an answer. Ask me anything you like. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. Go check out Brian Lang, the host of Live Truth Radio on WakingUpTheMasses.com. Check out Bob Brutus kicking the capstone. And also check out Nick Tucker with Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Also, DistortedReality.Podbean.com. Check out his uh, his latest episode he's got a new one coming up this week at some point and uh you can go check out kicking the capstone and distorted reality over on uh, you can click on the links at the top of the page at freeamericaradio.us and i'm going to put brian, brian lang's live truth radio on that page too as soon as i as soon as i get his permission to do so folks You are an American citizen, and your obligation and duty to protect this country, your state, your county, your city, your neighborhood is very, very important. Very important. Don't react to their negativity. Don't react to even my negativity, because I'm really pissed at what's going on. Choose the best route for you to go. And if that means you go to the city council and you yell at them and scream at them and tell them and give them the facts about fluoride and all that and all that crap going on in the water and in the air and all the food and the GMOs and how uh, they're violating the Constitution and all that, whatever it is you have a beef with them about, you choose the best pass, uh, path to approach that council. You know inside of you what's best for you. I just hope that I do my best on this side of the microphone to encourage you to go look this stuff up and to help yourself out, gain the information you need to understand what's going on around you. Because I'm pulling away the curtains and I'm showing you who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. That's all I'm doing. I'm giving I'm I'm showing you the map. You've got to choose the direction to go. That's all I'm doing. And all of that folks, all I can say is I'll be here tomorrow 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on Free America Radio Network on wakingupthemasses.com, freeamericaradio.us. And broadcasting on 1610 AM in the Chickamauga, Georgia area. Hello, Georgia. 
In the meantime, folks, do what you have to do to protect you, your family, your city, your state, and your county. Because it's up to you. Because, remember, we the people have the power. For we are America. America.